Coming up, behind these iron gates lie the graves of some of Lowell's most famous dead, including a Civil War general. And... Because no one I know knew Bill. I mean, they'd heard of him, they'd seen him, but they had no sense of knowing the man. A documentary about Westford artist Bill Millett. It's all ahead. Good afternoon and welcome to Suncast. He was a governor, United States Senator, and Civil War General before settling in Tewksbury. We're in Lowell's Hildred Cemetery, where behind this iron fence lies the grave of General Adelbert Ames. Dave Prevere has more. Those who harm or rob a grave from God's just wrath no one can save. Bad luck comes to those who tread with careless steps above the dead. Enter a private gravesite inside Hildreth Cemetery. Century-old maple trees line the darkened path to where General Adelbert Ames is buried. His legacy is one of distinction and honor. Born in Rockland, Maine in 1835, Adelbert Ames enrolled in West Point at age 22. Throughout the Civil War, General Ames commanded men in nearly every major Eastern battle and won the Congressional Medal of Honor after being wounded at Bull Run. After the war, Ames met and married Blanche Butler, daughter of Civil War General and Congressman Benjamin Butler of Lowell. Ames later became the governor of Mississippi and was a U.S. Senator from that state during Reconstruction before he and Blanche settled in Tewksbury. Their children also made names for themselves. His son, Adelbert Jr., became a famous scientist, and his daughter Blanche's botanical drawings are famous. She married somebody else named Ames, so she was Blanche Ames Ames, and he was a famous botanist at um, Harvard, and they traveled all over the world, and she did paintings, and he, they identified um, plants from all over the world that are, and they, they still use their paintings and their descriptions in um, botany classes today. Caroline McCloy is not directly related to Adelbert Ames, but their families are connected through marriage. The family maintains the private graveyard to preserve their legacy and peace of American history. In Lowell, Dave Kavir for the Suncast. For more on General Adelbert Ames, stories and slideshows at extras.molson.com slash Gettysburg. Now, he left behind hundreds of paintings and drawings, but to many, what Western artist Bill Millett was a mystery. We have a preview of a locally produced documentary that explores his life and work. Because no one I know knew Bill. I mean, they'd heard of him, they'd seen him, but they had no sense of knowing the man. <laughs> he scared me to death. I mean, he was so big, 6'5", and he had the long beard, and he had the red plaid jacket and the rubber boots and the dish towel around his neck with a clothespin to keep it closed. I had never been in his house. And I wish at this point that I certainly had because his house was full of all of these beautiful paintings everywhere. What happened in Bill's life that made him basically become a recluse?
coming in through the front door. There were no lights, so we were given headlamps to walk through the house. You could really see too much. It was just piles of seemingly totally random things up to about shoulder height, I'd say. Because it was sort of like an archaeological dig. designed well. You know, he, he shows evidence of being a very well-trained painter. There's some sadness that things probably didn't work out in his life as he would have liked. spoke with the producers, Barbara Peacock, a Westford photographer, and Howard Phillips, an associate director of film at Boston University's Center for Digital Imaging Arts. The production that we're, that we're doing is called Out of the Shadows because Barbara and I want to honor him and bring his, his artwork for a few outside of the house. Barbara was Bill's neighbor on Graniteville Road. My family moved here in 1958 to Westford, and Bill was living here at that time with his mother. Um, <clears throat> we, there are five of us, five children in my parents' family, we used to come um, and see his paintings, which were out front in, in a display case. And I remember distinctly the winter scenes and the landscapes of Bill Millett's. Although many people in Westford knew of Bill, he kept to himself, communicating through his artwork. He was a complex man. Um, he was a very private man, uh, yet complex. And that's what we hope to reveal through, also his own word, he kept copious journals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping to get a fairly well-known actor mm -hmm. to read in a beautiful voice, his voice, to tell his story, um, because he's got some very interesting things to say. He kept a lot of journals, yes. which was one of the ways that he communicated, I believe, that was one of his ways to communicate, and he even wrote stories about himself. He wrote stories to curators talking about his art. So that was one way that he, co he communicated. When Bill died this past November at 85, hundreds of his paintings and drawings were discovered. The incredible thing about his art is he was a very good draftsman. He could paint a portrait beautifully and a landscape beautifully and do these incredible drawings so he was very yeah. well-rounded and that's unusual as an his, artist. His watercolor style is different. He's very light touch, very, uh, very, not that his art style is heavy-handed anyway, but I think his watercolors are very unique. His family home was a Pandora's box of historical treasures, some of which will be displayed at the Westford Museum. The, the, the wonderful thing about this house is essentially one family lived in it and I don't think they threw anything out, or they threw very little out, so the house was chock full of uh, 130 years of uh, family history and also of Westford history. While the house is currently on the market, the family hopes the new owner will preserve its history. For more information or to support the documentary, visit web.mac.com slash out of the shadows. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a great afternoon.